I see so many people that are looking at forecast apps, like for instance, the UAV forecast. So I use UAV forecast all the time, but I thought it'd be quite interesting to talk about forecast and talk about weather and um, how I really interpret it. So this is, this is stuff that I do um, as a GVC and an A2 CFC qualified uh, pilot or operator, whatever you want to call it. You see so many posts about the UAV forecast app. Is it good to fly? Is it not good to fly? So let's go through each part of it and see what it is. So today it looks good to fly. The weather is sunny with clouds. So that's accurate. So the forecast is accurate to what it actually is. The sun is giving you the uh, sunset time and sunrise time, which is always good information to have. Personally, I like to fly in golden hour, which is around about sunrise or sunset. That's good for a couple of reasons. First, you get some really awesome photos. And secondly, there's less people about. If you want temperature. So the temperature at the moment is five degrees. Now, why does temperature matter? A few reasons. So the first thing about temperature really is your drone has a specification. If you re you'll be able to find that online and it will give you the operating temperature and you shouldn't really be operating outside that temperature because if, if you did and there was an accident, say your drone fell out of the sky uh, and it landed on somebody, then you are, they would look at it and say, well, why have you operated out of, this, out of the temperature that you should be doing? It's also not obvious necessarily for things like the Mavic Air 2 has an operating temperature down to minus 10 the Mavic Air 2S has an operating temperature down to zero. Now they're the same batteries. I don't know why that is. If anybody knows why that is, please leave a, a thing in the comments. If it is very cold, your batteries won't operate so efficiently. So if it's very cold, the, the actual aircraft will be more efficient in that the air is more dense. So the propeller moving at a certain speed will get more lift, but your battery will be less efficient. So it kind of balances it out really. Um, if it's very cold, you know, if, if it's below the operating temperature, I wouldn't fly. If it's approaching that, then certainly you'd want to put the, um, warm up the batteries if you can, so that when you fly them, they are, they are warm. I mean, about 30 degrees is probably optimum. You see, I think some of the DJI Enterprise drones have batteries that are pre-warming or will warm themselves, which is a really good idea. The other thing about the cold actually, is that it, you might find it more difficult to operate. So we're standing here, it's what, probably about four or five degrees, there's still a bit of frost on the ground, it's about lunchtime, and my hands are getting really cold actually, my hands are, qu are quite kind of uh, blue, and that might affect your ability to operate the drone. If you are out all day, for instance, and you are flying your drone, maybe you need to make sure that you've got enough water, and enough food, so that when you're actually flying it, you, you are switched on enough to make the right decisions. So don't try and fly if you're not feeling 100% either, and the weather can have an effect on that. Wind. Now this is probably the biggest thing that this is used for, and I use it all the time. So wind, it says it's two miles an hour at the moment, which is, which is, which is seems accurate. It, it seems like there's actually no wind to little wind. So this is wind I've got here at, on the ground. The other thing this will do, it'll give you wind at altitude or the forecast wind at altitude. So I'm gonna go up to 400 foot. It says it's three miles an hour at 400 foot. That's perfect. You can't obviously measure the wind at 400 foot, but you could measure it at ground level. I've got a, a wind meter. If your wind speed at ground level is the same as what it says on the app or less, the chances are that maybe at 400 foot, it'll also be the same or less. It's wind gusts. So again, you've got the option to have this at 400 foot. I think actually it might be a paid option because I think um, you can do it, it's free and they don't give you that, that option, but it's worth just checking the uh, what height that it's worth checking what the gust could potentially be if you're concerned about wind fly into the direction of the wind so if the, i feel like the wind is coming i don't know where it's coming from actually say it's coming from this direction if it's blowing this way you can fly up and fly in that direction so at least you know that if it your blow, your drone does get blown it's going to be blown towards you rather than if you've flown it over that way and flown out and you can't get back through the wind to land other thing to think about about wind and flying drones is that it's generally windier higher up. So if you've flown up to 120 meters or 400 foot and it's very windy, it's getting blown away, the first thing to do really is reduce altitude. If you've flown your drone, say, uh, say 500 meters away, you've lost connection and it's set to return home at 120 meters, then it's gonna go up 
it's lost connection, it's gonna go fly up into the worst wind and get blown further away. And all it's gonna try and do is just fight back through the wind and it's never gonna happen. It's always gonna end up flying away. You're never gonna see your drone again. So that's wind. Wind direction, well, it's just useful to know. It doesn't really actually change anything. Precipitation probability, so the precipitation, rain, snow, hail, sleet, anything that falls out the sky really. I would even say, to some extent, fog. What's the problem with rain? Well, every drone has an IP rating. Every, everything actually has an IP rating. Even the phone has an IP rating. And that really gives you the, uh, how, much, how likely it is for, for water to, or dust to get into the phone or ingress into the drone. So, a rule of thumb, if there's any sort of precipitation, if there's any rain, if there's any mist, if there's anything like that, I wouldn't fly because it's just too risky. Um, I will say I have flown and it started to snow. I landed pretty quickly once I, I see it was starting to snow. Um, so avoid precipitation. The problem with it is if you get rain in your drone, it might fail. It might have some unknown effect on the electronics. It might cause it to fly one way or another. And you won't know, this is gonna be unexpected. You won't know about this until it's happened. And when it's happened, you can't do anything about it. So really, I never fly in any sort of rain. Right, fog. So I've seen some great cloud inversion pictures recently, of people flying above fog or above low clouds, and you get some really beautiful pictures. I tried doing this, so I thought I could see the sky. Okay, so I've taken the drone, I've set it out. It was, um, you know, it was, the drone had been in the car all night, so it wasn't very warm. Um, the drone took off fine, did all my pre-flight checks, took off. I could see it just through the clouds and then the cloud or the, the um, and then the fog just moved slightly so I couldn't see it. So I thought, right, no, I'm going to bring it back down. The drone had got condensation on the sensors and on both on the, on the camera and on the actual, the sensors facing down. So it was thinking it was about to land. I spent about 10 minutes trying to get the drone, pull it down with the sticks and it would say, I'm going to land. And of course it can't land because it was like 10 meters up. Eventually I did get it down. Obviously it's going to come down in the end anyway, but you know, I got it down safely, shall I say. So, but it's really one to look out for. If your drone is going to fly through cloud or, you know, mist, it's really one to, to be very careful of. Certainly you'd want the drone to be warmer. So certainly you want to have it nice and warm in the car on the way to it. So that actually it's really warm when you set it up so that it's going to fly up through and it shouldn't get condensation on it but I wouldn't advise flying beyond visual line of sight. I did a video on that, check it out, I'll put a link up here somewhere. I mean, thunderstorms, if you could get some pictures of lightning from a drone, wouldn't that look amazing, yeah? But the thing about thunder and thunderstorms is that you really get really strong updrafts within the cloud. So generally, you know, a thunderstorm's coming and you'll see it in the distance. You might even hear it rumbling, but you might not. So if it's getting really dark, then don't fly. It's really, you know, or keep it very close to you, because the last thing you want is your drone to be half a mile away. Don't fly half a mile away, but for instance, you get a thunderstorm come over, and um, you have to then throw, fly through the thunderstorm and to land it. Chances are you're gonna lose your drone, so keep well away from thunderstorms. There's plenty of rain radar apps out there, so it's worth using a rain radar app. So if you turn up and it looks perfectly fine, um, you might start to set up, but if there's a thunderstorm that's just like a, a you know, three or four miles away that's fast moving, then you can find that on the rain apps, yeah, on the rain radar apps. Also, there are lightning apps as well, so you can see where lightning strikes are, which is a really good indication, actually, of where thunderstorms are. And you can have that set up as an alert. So I've got that set up as an alert. If there's a thunderstorm 20 miles away, I will get an alert, so there was a, a lightning strike. So it's always worth having that as well. Right, cloud cover. So if the cloud is high, it doesn't really make a lot of difference to our flight. It might make visibility more difficult or, or, or less difficult. It could be useful as far as if you're taking a picture, the cloud cover, because you might want a very sparse cloud cover. Right, visibility 10 miles. I don't really know why, why that's in there because you know we can look 10 miles and see their drone. That's just stupid, really. Satellites, visible satellites. So it says it's 18 at the moment, which is good. We've just flown the drone, actually. We know it's 18, but you sometimes see it, it's down to 12 uh, or lower. And really, you can change that how many you want it to have. The thing about um, satellites, if you put your drone down, it can't find enough satellites, it won't fly. Well, it'll fly in ATI mode, actually, and that's a bit, it's not like you can't fly, but it's more difficult. There will be no um, 
GPS necessarily. So watch out for that. But I've never had a problem where it didn't lock on to um, satellites. The only problem you might find, if you're flying in a city and there's very high buildings, you might find there's a problem with satellites. But you won't really know that until you arrive. KP index. So no, it's not about the nuts or the crisps. KP, I believe actually, is the likelihood of um, of uh, like an electromagnetic storm or solar flares. Now, solar flares can affect um, any electronics actually, but certainly the satellites it could affect. It could affect the signal between the drone and the, the controller. It could affect the, the, the signal between the satellites and the drone. So that's certainly one to look out for, but I've never had an issue with it, I will say. Right, and it's flying in the dark. So you can fly in the dark, and for the um, open category, there's no specific requirement for that. So that means that you can, you know, come here, put your drone down, fly it, you're fine, according to the regulations. If you're flying commercially, it suggests a few other things. So it includes a strobe light, it includes um, doing a, like an on-site survey in the light, it includes um, light in the landing area. There's a few other bits. I'll put the actual information to it for the CAP 722 in, in the description here. But um, I would suggest it's probably worth doing all those things. If you're gonna fly in the dark, I would look at what it recommends for commercial flights and look at doing some of those things because the visibility, obviously you need to be able to see the drone. So there's a bit more of an issue. You need to be able to see where it's landing. And um, with something like the Mini, it's got no sensors on it. With something like the Air 2, it has sensors, but they won't work necessarily in the dark. You can do it, it's just need to be extra careful. So in summary, really, the UAV forecast app is very good, but it is just a forecast. So look at it and, um, you know, if it's very windy, you can test it. If it's raining, you'll know if it's raining or not. So you need to use it as a forecast and not as a hard and fast fly, don't fly. You can look at the conditions on the day. I remember recently we went out um, to do some filming, uh, it was about an hour and a half away, and we looked at the UAV forecast uh, and we just took a chance, you know, we thought we might get some, some time into flight, luckily we did, but we only had about an hour window to fly, but it worked out okay. But if you follow exactly what it says, uh, without looking at the conditions, sometimes you are gonna miss opportunities when you could fly and you're gonna turn up to fly when you can't. So just remember, it's a forecast app, not a observations app. There are a list actually of local airports and often they'll have observations. So you can see not just what the forecast is, but what it's actually doing at the time. It's worth looking at those if you are going to be flying close to one. Obviously you wouldn't fly close to an airport, but if you're flying 10 miles away from an airport, you'll know what the local observations are, like the cloud, where it is, and things like that. Thanks for watching, and if you found the video useful, please hit the subscribe, like, and bell icon thingy. Thank you very much. See you next time.